Senator Mansfield. Mr. President. Mr. President. Yes? Senator Mansfield on the line. Who? Senator Mansfield. Hello. Yes, sir. How are you feeling today? Oh, tired. Like you. Uh, I'm awfully tired. Are you at home at the office? Uh, at the office. Uh, you all not in session, are you? Yes. Oh, good. It's Friday. Oh, I, you know, I keep thinking it's Saturday. I was going home yesterday, and I couldn't on account of this Dominican thing. And how it's Friday. I'm renaming Dillwig. I just signed the nomination. Oh, I appreciate it. You that. call him and tell him I don't know him. Tell him it, that uh, to do a good job and uh, to uh, drop us a note and thank us, and it's already done. And it'll be up, uh, I guess, before you get out of session today. Well, thank you very much, Mr. President. He's a good man. Let me bring this to your attention. We are very puzzled and frustrated on what to do in uh, the Dominican Republic. Uh, there are indications of other likely outbreaks in Latin America, communist-inspired, Guatemala particularly. Uh, <coughs> Lady Dirksen comment heard us a good deal the other night saying that uh, Admiral Rayburn announced that uh, we were moving in to keep Castro from taking over, uh, which we didn't say at all. Admiral just said that uh, some of these people were communist and uh, we had to watch them and it will move from two to eight and now it's moved to 45 more. We've got 53 of them identified yeah. as Castro trained and most of them are card carrying. They have knocked the Bosch people out, uh, kicked them overboard. And the Castro people are now uh, the leaders in, in full swing. Well, I tried to talk Dirksen out of that, those statements yesterday that he made uh, because I thought it might have a bad effect. But uh, it had I also a... tried to say that Castro was uh, not involved in this, that uh, you sent them in only to bring out Americans and other nationals, that I thought that you were in the right, that we were not intervening, that to show that we weren't, you distributed Red Cross supplies impartially, and that you wanted to do was to get the Americans out and stable government there and uh, withdraw our forces. That's what we would like to do, but uh, he uh, he surfaced this thing and got a lot of criticism, but uh, here is our problem. We have about a thousand there. The Castro forces are really gaining control. They shot down uh, the police station this morning and had 900 police in it, and they have marched them down the streets as hostages. Uh, They've been augmented by 45 uh, new ones. Uh, they're going to set up a Castro government. Uh, we've got Bosch uh, agreeing to a ceasefire. Uh, he says he will at 12 o'clock. We're trying to get the rebels to agree to a ceasefire, too. We think we can. We're going to denounce a ceasefire. We begged the OAS to send somebody in last night. They won't move. They're just phantoms. They're just the damnedest fraud I ever saw. Mike, it's just this terrible when you got men killing and there are thousand of them casualties down there. And they don't, good luck, we haven't had any of our own, but they just won't move. They just talk. Uh, these international organizations ain't worth a damn except for wonder dressing. Uh, so we said, please go. And no, they went home to sleep today. So I've got a meeting of Brusk and McNamara and George Ball and Tom Mann and all of them trying to reactivate them and get them up and let us send some people, send them in an airplane so they can go in. They won't do it. Uh, we, uh, if we get a ceasefire announced by Bosch and uh, the uh, uh, rebel, uh, the loyal general, uh, we think that would help some if we could get the OAS in. Then we're going to also ask them to send any of their observers, any military contingents, they will. Yes. We'd like for them to send them in. Uh, we don't think that they'll do that. Then the big question is, do we let Castro take over and us move out, or what do we do? Well, if you let Castro take over, you've got to consider Haiti. Oh, yeah, I've got to consider the whole outfit. Yeah. I'm just, let me show you. Dominican Republic.
It looks like they may be stirring up two or three of these. Now the question, the big question is, how can we get as much international cloak as we can and what do we do, uh, how do we get them in or what the hell do we do? Uh, I've got all of my liberals I can uh, talking to uh, these folks. I'm talking to Munoz Marine and talking to the president of the University of Puerto Rico. They're talking to Bosch. They've got Bosch to agree to call for ceasefire because he realizes that the Castro's have taken it. And he indicates he doesn't, he's not going to let them use him, although we don't know. We've got a call that came in the last five minutes from the Santa Domingo police, 900 of them in this uh, cell, uh, this fort down at the end of the island. And they say, send us people to protect us, that they're shelling us with cannon. Uh, we think they're using these bazookas on them. They've taken a hundred of them out, marched them down as hostages, and said that if, uh, if uh, the, the loyalists don't quit shooting, that they're going to kill them all. Uh, we do not have adequate forces there. We have them alerted. We can take them there in 40 hours. The thing to do, Mr. Breton, I think, is to uh, keep the pressure on the OAS and see if we get a ceasefire and, uh, and try Well, the OAS called for a ceasefire last night, but they went home and went to sleep. They won't meet till tomorrow, and I'm trying to get them back today, and I suppose they don't today. Do I let them take over? It looks to me like I'm in hell of a shape either way. If I take over, I can't live in the world. If I let them take over, I can't live here. Right. Tough one, Mr. President, but keep the pressure on, and if you can use the good officers of Mexico, I think that ought to be done for a ceasefire and to get the OAS to do something. But though Mexico will not do anything, but at least it might bring the OAS back in. I told them to try to get man to call Correa de Flores because uh, uh, they understand each other, and he could tell him what's happening. I'm trying to get some people to go and notify uh, Venezuela. They don't know what's happened, you see. Uh, they, this same thing happened to them. Yes, they are. But uh, they, they, you know, nobody can really come out in favor of Marines. Yep. No Mexican. That's right. That's right. Uh, but I'm putting the heat on. But do I, what would you, how would you respond to this call for help of the 900 police? Hmm. If I let them fall, you know what the Dirksen going to do to us. That's right. They're going to eat us up if I let another Cuba come in there and they say, why would you sit on your big fat tail? Well, it's... Uh, I'm afraid to talk to them, Mike, because they go out and talk. That's right, and uh, and, uh, and and police is just as bad as Marines almost if you're going to go in and rescue the police. If it was the people, it would be a little bit different. But if you have 900 police, it's some kind of odd if they can't protect themselves. Well, you see what the communists have got. They've got these folks... They're really led by about 50 active ones now. But they've got two or 3,000. They've got them on tops of buildings with bazookas and with the, uh, machine guns and everything else. And they're firing, with, hey, they've captured 21 tanks from the other crowd. And they're just getting ready to wrap this thing up just like they did Cuba. Mm. Well, Mr. President, I'll have to think about this. You please do it and let's talk about it. No, no, you did. I just wanted to explore it with you, and there's nobody else up there I've talked to. I'm really afraid to talk to anybody. I'm afraid that if I talk to Fulbright, I'm afraid that he'll tell the New York Times. We went in yesterday and told him about the possibilities of sending some other people out there, General Green's matters, you know. And uh, by God, the New York Times was down here in less than an hour with the whole story. Hmm. And he just can't talk to uh, you just can't talk to Fulbright or Dirksen. They just talk. Now, on the other hand, I think I ought to talk to the leaders this afternoon. This is, I don't want them to say they don't know, no. but I can't have them in the papers. And Dirksen just ruined us the other night going back to that party and telling them that, uh, that uh, I asked him what to do, and he said that I got to don't let Castro take over, and that Admiral Rayburn said that Castro was taking over. Yeah. Then that, that made Bosch so mad that he almost quit us. Yeah. He said, you charged me with being a communist. And right. The Herald Tribune quoted it, and they, they read it in Puerto Rico. And so maybe you ought to tell Dirksen that if I'm talking and might be called, but for God's sakes that we just can't talk like the other night, just tell him I caught hell all over this hemisphere because somebody, don't tell him he did, but because somebody said that Rayburn said this, and they claim it is, is Dirksen Ford's what the newspaper boys say. Okay, I'll tell him. And then you think about it, Mike. Give me a ring. Okay, sir. Bye.